I teach women how to stop struggling with their bodies and with food by teaching them about their brains. Hi, Carrie Nygaard here. I am the owner of Brain Management 101 Life Coaching Practice, and I run a program called Freedom with Body and Food. I'm going to teach you eight basic things about your brain that once you know these eight brain basics, you're able to get in front of your brain and manage it to go in the direction you want to go rather than it jerking you around wherever it desires. First, you need to understand that there are two different parts to your brain. There is the prefrontal higher brain where you do your higher brain conscious thinking. This is where you, your consciousness resides. Like me talking to you right now and you listening to me, we are up here in our conscious thinking brain. But just like in our bodies, there are parts of our bodies, systems in our body, muscles in our body that we have to consciously choose to move, that we control. There is also parts of our body that operate automatically, like our digestive system. We don't have to think really hard for our body to digest the food. It just does that. This is the same thing for our brains. Way less, like over 90% of our thoughts of the thinking that goes on in our brain is in our subconscious automated thinking. Less than 10%, way less than 10% of our thoughts are conscious, meaning that we're creating them with intention, that we're even mindful or conscious of. I'm going to teach you eight brain basic, eight things to know about this lower brain functioning so that you can use your higher brain functioning to monitor and supervise your brain. All of your thoughts are not you. We all are human and we all have human brains and they have hardwired functions into them that help keep us alive. And that's what I'm going to teach you about. Brain basic number one is that our brain thinks our thoughts are facts. Your lower brain cannot tell the difference between a really good visualization and real life. It cannot, our subconscious brain, you can, your conscious divine true self, your higher brain can tell the difference between a, a movie and real life, but your lower brain cannot. Similarly, our brain cannot tell the difference between a fact and a thought. It thinks all of your thoughts are facts. How does this show up in our life? Well, let me give you one example. Um, I look out my window right now and I might say, huh, it's a dreary day outside. That is not a fact, though my brain thinks it's a fact. It looks outside and says, oh, it's a dreary day. The facts would be the cloud cover, the temperature, the precipitation point, the dew point, the all the things, barometric pressure, all the different things that are factual, the visibility, all of these things that are factual, that can be quantitatively, um, you know, put into a court of law as evidence, things that are void of emotion and thought, those are facts. Facts are neutral. The weather, me thinking that it's dreary outside is my thought or my meaning that I attach to those facts outside. As I observe the facts, I attach meaning to it. And that meaning is what creates my reality with the facts, the way I'm going to interpret and interact with the facts. My thoughts create my reality with the world, the circumstances and facts around me. Your life is only as good as the quality of the meanings or as quality of the thoughts that you connect to your life, to the facts in your life. Another example of this would be style fashion style. I might put on a shirt and I might think this is a really cute shirt and someone else might see the shirt and think that is an ugly shirt. And all, both of those are just thoughts. The only facts would be the color, the color saturation, the cut, the measurements, all of those things would be the facts. The thought, the meaning that we attach to it it being cute or it being ugly, whatever it may be, is the meaning that each individual is attaching to it. Therefore, they are creating the reality with that shirt, with the fact, with the neutral circumstance with it. Now let's relate that to our bodies and to food. When, we, when it comes to body awareness, body identity, we need to realize that our brain thinks its thoughts are facts. And there are lots of thoughts 
that are given to us in this society that we've adapted without even realizing it. From the time that we're born to the time that we're seven years old, we do not have the brain development to be, um, to be able to question and to say that's not true or that is. We just are automatically being programmed. Once we reach about the age of 12, we are able to think about our thinking. And then sometime in our mid-20s, we are able to um, have our prefrontal cortex be fully developed. Our cognitive thinking, judgment making part of ourself um, comes fully online. But from the time that we're zero to seven, we're being taught lots of thoughts about our bodies and we're not able to distinguish what is fact and what is just thought. We think that it's all fact. Here's an example. Bodies should be beautiful. Well, what even is, that's just a thought. And not only that, but when we think that thought, if we think bodies should be beautiful, then what we're going to be doing is thinking, is my body beautiful? And I'll be constantly, people, your brain will be constantly contrasting your body to other people's bodies that you think might be beautiful to see if you measure up to be beautiful. If you're thinking the thought that bodies should be beautiful. Thoughts are optional. Facts are neutral circumstances. Our relationship and the way we interact and, and relate to our bodies is directly connected to the quality of the thoughts we think about our body. Bodies should be beautiful is just a thought. What if bodies should just be whatever they are? Bodies are our vessels that house ourselves as we journey throughout time. You are not your body. And not only that, you are not all of your thinking and your hardwired programming lower brain, the unconscious thinking parts of your brain thinks its thoughts are facts and they are not. But once you consciously realize that, you begin to analyze all the thoughts that your brain has identified as fact and you start to question it. So think about your bodies, think about your food. Here's another example. I had a client recently who says, I just love Reese's. And she's not the first client to tell me this. She says, I just love Reese's. I always want them. I always want them on hand. If I run out of them, I'm going to go get them. And, um, you know, people always buy them for me because they know I love Reese's. And she says, I love them. Thinking they're so good. I love them. Just, it's just a thought. And your brain thinks that it's a fact. Reese's are so good. I love them. That's just a thought. And not only that, but when you think that thought, it's going to create a demand to have them. What if, what if they're not as amazing as you think they are? You, I'm not telling you, you can't think that way. You absolutely can think that way about Reese's if you choose to, but maybe they are, and maybe they aren't. This same client came to me after I sent her through an awareness exercise that she chose to use Reese's to do that with. And she said, you know what I discovered? I don't really like Reese's the way that I thought that I did. And the reason, because as she paid attention to the actual facts, the actual experience of putting the Reese's in her mouth, paying conscious awareness of how it felt in her mouth, how it tasted in her mouth, how it felt to swallow, how it felt in her stomach afterwards, what she realized was it wasn't near as amazing. It wasn't so good the way she thought that it was. And she didn't love it the way that she thought that she did. It was her thoughts about the Reese's that gave it so much importance and, and, and meaning to her. But when she became consciously aware of the Reese's and experienced it factually for what it really was and observed it as more of a, a non-biased observer as she experienced the Reese's, she realized she didn't like them near as much as she thought she did and her desire to have them went down significantly. This is the type of work that I do with my clients. I teach them how to use their brain, how to use their higher thinking brain to manage their lower thinking thoughts by teaching them eight simple brain basics about their brain and skills to use that knowledge to leverage it to their power. So that concludes brain basic number one, your brain thinks your thoughts are facts as we applied it to body and food.